Buddhist Stories, The King Who Offered His Eyes to the Blind Brahman, Part 4 of 4, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on August 27, 2015 in France. And the bad king, huh? Bla, bala, bada, bada. <laughs> Heard about that? Come out, you know. Came out and greet the Brahmin. Come back and say, "Have you been able to get the eyes, the eyes of the king?" Say, "Yes, yes. Now I can see everything and see very far, just like him." And the king, uh, pleasant eyes, dead or not? Your Majesty, when they took the eyes from his socket, it's very painful and, and a lot of blood, he lose a lot of blood. You know, blood is soaking all his body, look very, very terrible and frightening. But many uh, heavenly beings come down and ask for him, and ask him, uh, doubted his intention. So he vowed that uh, if uh, he's sincere, then his eyes return to him. And then it's really like that. His eyes return to him and even, look even better than before. This, uh, uh, the king, after the king, uh, Bala Bada Bada, <laughs> a bad Bala Bala, bad king, heard that. He's so angry. Uh, you know, he's heartbroken. He's really heartbroken, drop dead. Poor oh, guy. <laughs> Meaning he deserved it. Yes. Uh, after this, that's I say, huh? not the Buddha. Huh? No, no. <laughs> and bad, bad master. Yeah. Maybe it's not your master. Say it's a Maya somewhere here. But he's a bad king. What for he live? He make his people suffer so much, right? And almost lost the country, and almost blood will be flowing everywhere because of war. Understand? Yeah. Innocent people will die because of him. So if he die one person, it's a good cause, huh? Save millions. Save millions, yeah. Otherwise, a lot of refugees and you know a lot of trouble for a neighboring country as well. Just like, almost like now. Hmm. So the Buddha remind Anand first. Anand, you should know. <laughs> you know already. <laughs> You all should know that <laughs> that the pleasant king at that time is no one else but I myself. Yeah. And the Brahman, the ex blind Brahman before is the blind ex the blind the beach you now now that already attained arhat. Yeah. In the few, in the former life through my through my good heart he has gained his eyesight. And in this lifetime, not only he regained his eyesight also, but also he has wisdom eye too for me. Yeah. Life after life, I also have been doing similar sacrifices so that I can gather, you know, merit, like mountains and rivers, yeah, or countless countless of merit, so that I can become Buddha. Uh, because of all this gathering merit, so I became Buddha. Therefore, all of you should also be diligent in practicing and aspire, aspire to the um, the highest goal of Buddhahood. Yeah. Everyone heard the Buddha say thus. Everyone was so touched so touched with his immense uh, compassion and love. Therefore, their heart open, you know, and sincere. So many people attain different levels of spiritual consciousness. Everyone prostrate to the Buddha and left. The story ends. We should really 
thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who had take time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. My God, and the book's not end yet. <laughs> Lot of story. But we stop now, huh? Okay. And you come and drink, and tomorrow maybe we joke again and read another story again. Less scary tomorrow, okay? Less scary. But even the scare, scary story is also help us to know that whatever we suffer is nothing compared to the Buddha's sacrifice. Such a great courage person. Yeah. Okay, but do you think the Buddha really need all this sacrifice to become Buddha? No? Why? Tell me. Why not? Because uh, he just uh, do something good for others and... Uh, Where is the microphone? Everybody want to listen to your wisdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why doesn't... Why the Buddha did not need to do all this in order to become Buddha? If you say no, then why did he do it? Why did he do all this sacrifice? Uh, just uh, just because the Buddha had the uh, unlimited love for all the beings, and uh, when others uh, wanted, he just gave. Not uh, he, uh, he want to do this just for Buddhahood, and uh, um, uh, doing this this kind of things, and uh, this guy can be. Uh, have the affinity with Buddha, and uh, uh, later he have the chance to be initiated and to be liberated. Correct. So you have heard very well these days. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were sleeping, but <laughs> you're listening with your wisdom ears. <laughs> good, good. Bravo. Very good. Can I keep this? Continue drinking later because here I'm shy. I can, at home I will go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That is correct. The Buddha has done all that, behaved like a normal king, or like an like an animal even, just to saw good affinity seat with other beings. Otherwise, it's not. It looked like he just became the Buddha two thousand some years ago, or almost three thousand years ago. Looked like that. It appeared like that in our history, and he also wanted people to think like that. Mostly, he will not explain. Maybe he explained somewhere else, but it's not the first time that he became Buddha. But he did all this, appearing as a normal person and then gathering merit and all that. No, he has become Buddha, I don't know, ever since uh, time did not even exist yet. He has been a Buddha long, long, long time already. But then he sacrificed his Buddhahood. So he returned to normal beings again, so that he can transmigrate with all beings to help this suffering existence, to elevate them, to help them, to show affinity with them so that he can help them in the future. Otherwise, no one, no ordinary being can be liberated some, from suffering so, so easily like that. Even Buddha has to do so many things like that to, to, became, to become a Buddha again. 
he was a Buddha, but then he sacrificed Buddhahood to become an ordinary being, even become animals. Therefore, you see, if I read you all the stories about Buddha, when he w- uh, there one of the story in here that he was a uh, uh, Kuda, the animal with the golden golden fur and emit golden light. What kind of animal would emit golden light? It's it's, a, it's not a normal animals. You see what I mean? Yeah. And then, but in other time, he also appeared as just normal animal too. But then, even then, the heart. It's noble. The behavior is not normal, you see. So you never know. He sacrificed his Buddhahood to roll back into existence, into suffering existence, in order to show affinity with all beings. Yeah. All Buddhas do that. Therefore, we have to thank all of them, really. We really really are grateful. And we are grateful more to Sekamudi Buddha and Anan, so we can hear all this story. Otherwise, we have many religions, but we don't always hear good story like this, true story, yes. Uh, except today, you know, sometimes you tell me, you tell everybody your experience inside, you know, your own experience, then we could also write it. <laughs> yeah. Thus I have heard. <laughs> the Master Ching Hai was at one time in SMC. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there were 1,200 great assembly, including monks <laughs> and nuns from Korea <laughs> and Taiwan and China, etc., etc. You know what I mean? Mm. It's similar, understand? Similar. Except in the Buddha's time, whoever believe in Buddha, their mind is more pure, their faith is unshakable. Because these have a good affinity with the Buddha many lifetimes, and at that time the people are still pure. Life is more simple. It don't, it's good to have TV and Internet and all that, but then it also occupies a lot of our time. and. Uh, uh, elevate, uh, how to say, heighten more our intellectual capacity, and therefore it's a dimmen somehow, dimmen, dim, dimmen, huh? Dim, uh, lower our spiritual aspiration some somewhat. Understand? Also the all this uh, poisonous air and water and vegetable and whatever not these these days are not very conducive to our purity and our sincerity of spirit has been hampered some, somehow. But we do have experiences too. Eh? Yeah. yeah, many people see your Master flying everywhere and in different heavens and different situations, helping different people. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah? Yeah. Except we don't say, thus I have heard. Because Anan is not here. <laughs> yeah, similar like that, yes. So the Buddha has not been uh, has not become Buddha just under the Bodhi tree two thousand or three thousand years ago, no. How many? Maybe? Two five five eight. More or less two 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 thousand and half. Two thousand five hundred plus years ago, yes. It's not the first time that he became Buddha. How can a person you know, even married for many lifetime, have a lot of merit, we become Buddha just like that? No. He already has been a Buddha. He just sacrificed it. Just like a master came from uh, came from fifth level, né? they also sacrificed their comfort and bliss to come down to become a human again, you know, be born and and grow up and went to school and married and have children or not have children, suffering like everybody else, is sick and, you know, get old and all that. Yeah. But they came from the fifth heaven, came down to help us. Yeah? Jesus Christ, Prophet Muhammad, Guru Nanak, Mahavira, 
Krishna, etc., etc. They all have been from Nirvana. Otherwise, nobody can be enlightened so quickly in one lifetime. Not to such extent, yeah. Except you have the the great master to help you, pushing you up, you know, lifting you. But these are master who has become master. They have been always master. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much, all the bodhisattvas. <laughs> we do appreciate. I do appreciate your 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 sacrifice. You have to get up early and go to bed late and miss many of the fun. I appreciate that very much. Every day like that for a month or two months, three months before and now and. You pay, you know, your ticket like everybody else. You, you know, and, but you came. You just work, work, work. Mostly work. I really appreciate that, and I'm glad to have this opportunity to say thank you in this way. Thank you, Master. Everybody appreciate you. I think <laughs> other disciples they appreciate you, and if they don't, then um, we don't care. <laughs> Okay, huh? Yeah. If you need some of this cake, if you want to go home or you want to eat, it's okay. <laughs> we can buy more. All right? Thank you, Master. Any one of you all have blanket and enough yes. Yes. for this situation? Yes. Because yes. maybe you didn't prepare, you know? If you need more blanket like this, you tell the, the supplier, okay? They're very cheap, you know? I can buy. All for all of you, whatever you need, okay? Extra. Hmm? Uh, did you hear? Huh? Hello? You can buy, anybody needs something extra because they didn't prepare to stay long. You can buy it for them, okay? Okay then, beautiful people. I go now. <laughs> yeah. Give some snacks to my dog. <laughs> Maybe for, for the cat. Meow. 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 Because we do we have to spare, and sometimes it cold, sometimes it rain, you know? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, good then. Because I have some medicine if you need, okay? And the, the, the food, the dry food in, in, the, in the cupboard can take and use. Huh? Use them. And if uh, need, can buy again, okay? My kitchen or your kitchen. No problem. Ciao. Thank you for all your love.